Hey guys, welcome to another episode of NetSec Now. Today we are going to discuss the very first phase of the uh, penetration testing phases, and that is information gathering. Now in the last video we spoke briefly about it, but today we're really going to dive into it. We, we're going to use an example, an actual live example, of somebody that, uh, you know, has a lot of information out there and show you what to look for and how to get into it. We are also going to throw in a little bit of an extra and do a little social engineering for you. Okay, so let's read the disclaimer. Any information disclosed in the series is provided for the sole purpose of learning network security. We take no responsibility for any misuse of any information we provide. We only suggest you audit the systems you have permission on or otherwise in your virtual lab. Moving forward. So the phases of penetration testing, right? We spoke about this the last time, and um, today we're going to get into, like I said, the information gathering part of it, doing your homework. So information gathering, again, we want to touch on who is our client, what information have they or do they make public, who is their ISP, what type of businesses are they in, who works there, present, former employees, how many people do they employ. Now we may not be able to dig into each and every single one of these topics and or subtopics and um, you probably won't find that much information as you're searching out uh, doing your penetration tests. So uh, we'll try to get as much information as we can and like I said I'm going to throw in a little audio clip I did earlier of some social engineering just to sh show you guys how important that can be. So again we're going to use logic. Um, much as we've always been saying is logic is key. Using your brain is the best tool that you're going to have in your arsenal period. We're also going to do a little bit of Google searching. Um, we're going to search some social media sites maybe. Uh, we'll take a look at their website. Um, we're not going to really get into using website scanners today. Today I really want to get you used to using logic to solve problems. Uh, we can do a who is lookup on a domain. Um, you know, we're not going to really touch on many tools in Cali to do this. We're actually going to do everything via a web browser. Uh, also, again, you know, like I said, logic guys, we're going to keep hammering that into you. Logic, logic, logic. It is definitely the most critical component of your toolkit. And uh, as I said, we're going to throw in a little social engineering too, something I did earlier uh, today. So let's get out of here and let's fire up our Kelly Linux box. Okay, guys, so like I said, um, we basically just need a, a browser, okay? So what we're doing right now is information gathering, and this is uh, the person that we're going to actually be looking at here. Okay, so let's say that uh, this company here hired us to do an audit on their system, and, and guys, I've had this happen to me before, so be prepared for this to be thrown uh, into the mix. They claim well you're the penetration tester you're trying to perform a penetration test on like we never met you um, so we're not even going to give you our IP address now you know you can choose to turn away the job if you want but if you like a challenge you'll go ahead and take it so uh, if we were going to do that we already know what the name of their business is and this example we're using here is Salesmaster Flooring Solutions so we did a quick Google search to find out their website so once we pulled up their website here um, we see a couple of different things right off the bat. First of all, we see that they are the leader in engineered cements, and these are some of their, um, I guess, vendors they use or products they use. So you can see there's a little flash image here on the left. Also, we see the customer service phone number up here, which is an 800 number. Okay, so that might be worth some writing down some of that. So what we're going to just browse through their website here, just take a look at some stuff. Okay, well, there's nothing really too interesting here on this page, but if you look down towards the bottom here, there's an email, and it looks like there's an email click link, uh, or as you can see it come up here in the bottom left hand corner, mail to orders at salesmaster.com. So we know that they have another domain name too, it's not salesmasterflooring.com, but they also have salesmaster.com. Now that may be just set up as email. So if you wanted to, you can open up another tab and just check that out quickly salesmaster.com it might even be a URL redirect yep and that's what it looks like it's a URL redirect but uh, it looks like they might be using that domain for email specifically so that's another key and component to write down so again browsing through their website we can see that they have two locations 
One's a New York location, and it tells you the address right here, 303 Marcus Boulevard, Deer Park, New York, 11729, and then one here in the Massachusetts location. So it's a good idea to, you know, start taking notes on some of the stuff you find. So you can write hand notes like I usually do, or you can fire up uh, whatever you want, uh, you know, as far as a text pad or a notepad or something like that. So we'll just go ahead and fire up LeafPad. And we're going to start taking some notes here. So we want to write our target down. Oops. And that's going to be the website domain. And if you can, copy and paste everything because this way you know that uh, we can actually close this browser window out. This way you know what you're actually doing. There's no chance for a mistype. So let's go ahead and here, enter this. Okay. So we know that's our target. So we know that the other interesting information that they have here on their website is the locations. So we'll go ahead and copy this if we can. And then we will go ahead and paste that down here. And you can just split it up just to uh, make it a little bit more legible for yourself here. And we'll just get rid of this little dash there. Okay. So we got a little bit of information going on about them. Um, it may be worth copying this email address. So this way you know that you know they do have another domain which might be used for email. So that's the, uh, we can write in here mail to. Okay. So looking a little bit further at their website, you can click on a couple of different pages here or even highlight over the link and you can see that well, it looks like some of the web pages actually written in PHP. Now, PHP is known to have, you know, often have security vulnerabilities. Uh, there was, for a few years there, a PHP include vulnerability, which allowed you to upload a reverse shell to somebody's web server. So, that being said, you may want to go ahead and scan the website as well for known vulnerabilities or exploits. And usually, since it looks like this is probably uh, custom programmed, and if you scroll down here towards the bottom, um, you can see designed by Progressive Marketing Group. That may be something else that you want to copy. Okay, so I'm going to copy that and we're going to paste it right in here. And we'll just make web by. Now these are sloppy notes, guys. I mean, <clears throat> you know, there's no uh, rhyme or reason for it. But we're just taking some very basic notes and then we're going to go through logic and try to figure out a good attack plan here. Okay, so uh, that being said, you have a sitemap link down here, which might be useful to go down here and see some of their different links, right? So you can see that there's, you know, one in here, uh, products, carpet.php. Now, it doesn't look like there's a store in here, so we don't have to worry about that. There's some FAQs, news and events. In any case, we want to get down to the next step here, contact us. Now, this is where people love to put information, and these people are, in specific, are one of them. Okay, the first thing that jumps out at me here when I'm looking at this is right down here under Sales Master Contact Directory. First of all, it says to send an email to the person on the list, just click their name. Well, that's bad. They must get hammered with spam like every day because there are spam bots that that's all they do is they go out and crawl the web for these mail to addresses. And, um, you know, instead of putting links on them, uh, you know, or I'm sorry, images on them instead of links, you know, they just put regular mail to links. So if you clicked on this, it would open up a web browser. I mean, a web browser, a uh, email browser, uh, your email client, and go ahead and start emailing them. So that doesn't make sense. So that's that's number one. That's the first thing that jumps out at me. Second of all, they have a direct dial phone number here. So we can see that this area code is 631-242-0100. So I want to go ahead and copy that. And now, paste this in here. Okay, so that's going to come in, in, in handy here in just a minute. So again, this is a client that, you know, let's say they just they just were being stubborn. They didn't want to give us their IP address. They said, hey, well, if you're a big hacker guy, you know, figure it out for yourself. So, challenge accepted. Okay, so if we can look here, we may want to take down a listing of this whole directory. This is going to come in handy for a couple of different things. Let's say, for instance, you couldn't get into their network any other way. The network administrator locked that thing down solid. You are not getting in, period, end of story. There is no open ports on their, on their gateway. That's fine. Don't worry about it. 
we have just now a directory of how many of our people it says it looks like at least over 20 people uh, that work at the company now it doesn't tell us if they're w what uh, you know section they're in or what part of you know their their business they're in because as you as we took a look earlier uh, they have two locations so we don't know which which location these people are in and we have to assume since they have two separate locations but are all sharing the same telephone extensions more than likely they either have either have a shared uh, voice over IP hosting provider uh, something that's in the cloud or number two they have a site to site VPN which would be rather interesting to know right so we can surmise two things right off the bat from that so let's go ahead and copy Let's see if it'll copy and paste in here. Maybe not. We might have to use a web scraper to grab that. Oh, no. <laughs> it copy and pasted. Okay. So, uh, if you wanted to organize this list a little bit, I'm sure you can. Um, but, uh, you know, you, you just do like extension. But we can we can pretty much read, you know, from the website that it says name and an extension. Okay. Unfortunately, didn't copy their email address. <clears throat> However, you can you know go ahead and web scrape it if you wanted to but let's take a look at their naming convention for their emails so if we highlight over it, it says veronica at salesmasterflooring.com we highlight over kerry it's kerry at salesmasterflooring.com bob c okay so we know there must be another bob working here or something let's take a look or maybe there was at one point yeah i don't really see another bob but uh you could surmise that there probably was another Bob. That's why they used Bob C. Um, let's see. There is a. a mic. Oh, let me just deselect this so I can see it a little bit better. There's a mic in here. Is there another mic in here? Just to see. Mm. No. But there are two marks. Notice one's with a K and one's with a C, right? So they're not really using your typical naming convention. They're not really using like first letter of the first name and then dot last name or first letter of the first name and then last name with no spaces, no periods, no nothing. Um, they're pretty much just using their first names at whatever domain. So you could see that this one here, salesmasterflooring.com, the operator is, her name is Elise apparently. So uh, that might be good to know. Um, she seems like a gatekeeper. So if you wanted to call up and social engineer them, you'd have to know who you're speaking to. Nine out of ten times, people announce their names when you call up, but sometimes they don't. You know, they just answer, sales, can I help you? So, uh, or operator, can I help you in this case? Um, so you want to say, yeah, as, uh, hey, Elise, how are you? And if they say, oh, no, sorry, I'm sorry you got uh, Mary or something. Well, you know, oh, hey, Mary, how are you? I was looking for Elise. Uh, maybe you can help me out. Get them to click a link, open an email, something, right? Give you a password, maybe even. Okay. So moving on, that's some important information to know. We might, might want to use that for later attacks. And of course, if you want to just type in, um, you know, you could always save this page and look for their emails. Uh, or you want to type it, you know, their emails, their first name at domain. So let's just go ahead and do that. So let's just go down here, make a new line. Uh, so it's first name at sales master boring.com okay moving on so now they have a contact form in here maybe this is something that could include a uh, an include script you could always look at the source code here you know view page source then you could take a look at that search for form take a look at it we're not going to get into that right now I mean that's more exploitation so we're just in the Intel information gathering stage right now so it even gives you directions to their buildings okay <laughs> so for both of their uh, locations uh, not that that's really important for us unless of course you want to take a ride over there if it's local to you and see if uh, you know they have an open wireless access point or something that would help okay so moving forward um, I think we're pretty much done scraping this website for basic data we've already got a lot of data to be honest with you um, we got a real lot so we got addresses so Let's make sure we took those down. No, nope, we didn't. So let's take down the addresses. Oh, we did. Okay, yeah, here they are. Okay, so we took down their addresses. We've got uh, how they work out their email system. And you can look at all of them, or all of them are pretty much the same. It's just first name at whatever.com. In this case, salesmasterflooring.com. 
and their extension numbers we got. We got their direct dial phone number, which is good. We're going to want to take a look at that because that's going to help us navigate some stuff here. Okay, so we have that. So let's just say uh, we want to find out more about the people at the company. We didn't meet everybody. We just met the operator, for instance, okay, the, uh, or, or somebody lower level in the company like the chief technology officer and, you know, he's the one hiring us to do the pen test, but we want to learn as much information as we can about them, right? So you could either do this in terminal or do this on a web page, and I'll show you both ways. We're going to do a who is lookup on the domain. First, we're going to do it with a web page, and I'll put this link in the description as well. So the first page is who is dot sc forward slash, and then you would paste their domain in there. So just copy and paste this after who is dot sc. Now they may not like the HTTP in there, so no, oh, they took it. Okay, so let's go through the who is record. So now you can see that first of all, the register history is one register. Uh, names, uh, name server history one change in 10 years. IP 247 times it's changed. So we don't know if that's the same provider or if you know they've changed hosting providers 247 times in nine years. Uh, let's see, what else's information is interesting here? The reverse IP, you don't have to worry about that. It's probably seeing that this number here is very high. It looks like they're probably hosted with somebody else and we'll find that out here in just a minute. Okay, so registrant, this is the information we are looking for. Sales Master Associates, Inc. So we know that they're a U.S. corporation, and we know that their address is already. So you can copy this if you wanted to as well. And don't worry about if it's redundant information in here, guys, because we're going to dig through here just in a little while and pick out the most important things and scrape the rest. Okay, so, oh, let's see here. Domain name, salesmasterflooring.com. Okay, good, we knew that. Administrative contact, very interesting. Let's take a look at who this guy is. Mark Watkins, okay. So there's his email right there too, guys, right? So let's copy this and paste it into our document here real quick. Okay, so Mark Watkins. Hmm, let's go back to that uh, company directory we had there and look at who Mark Watkins is. Oh, hey, there he is. Extension 103, and sure enough, his email is mark at salesmasterflooring.com. And what was his email address over here? Oops. Hey, imagine that. So it's the right guy. So it looks like Mark Watkins is our administrative contact. He's probably the one who registered the domain. If not, he's an upper level guy. And you can see the 800 number here. Now, we don't need that because it already had it on the website. So you can see. Technical contact is host master, host centric. So that might be something uh, worth noting. So we'll just take that down as well. Now guys, you can never have enough notes. I just want to let you know, um, it, even the minute details are important. Uh, and then we're going to go through and actually, um, you know, look through the stuff and see what's important and, and pull out those key pieces of important information and then we're going to ditch the rest, right? So. We are in the stage of grabbing anything we can because it is all going to help us at some point. Okay, so going down, we can see that their domain was registered on November 20th in 1997. Now, that's not a really crucial or a key component of what we're looking for, but when we look down here, it looks like their website is hosted at Yahoo. So let's go ahead and copy the name servers and paste those here. Okay. So, let's take a look at registration page. It looks like their ICANN register is Network Solutions. Not really important, so I'm not going to copy it. Okay, server stats, their IP address. Yep, we confirmed it. It's definitely Yahoo. They registered the uh, website over there in 2002. Okay, so if you wanted to take note of the IP address, you could. That's not really going to help us. I'm not, you know, we wouldn't be trying to break into Yahoo servers anyway. We would be using their domain because we don't want to hack everybody's website. We just want to hack their website if that's what we're supposed to be doing. Okay. So we already surmise now from this that our technical contact is Mark. And we have Mark's contact information in here. So we know Mark's email address um, that we didn't write down here, but we could surmise that it's Mark at the domain.com by where we entered in this here. Okay. So we're probably not going to want to email Mark though if we're looking to do 
any kind of social engineering, right? Because Mark is probably a pretty smart guy. Uh, Mark's probably not going to, you know, randomly click links and open files if he's, you know, in charge of the website and domain. But you never know. Um, but I would not try him first. So let's take a look at what other kind of information that we can get. Okay. So let's go back to here. I think we're done with uh, the who is on that. Uh, just to show you how to do it in terminal as well, which may be even easier for you, is just type in the command who is and then paste the domain. So we're going to have to grab that domain again because I copied something else. Okay, you don't have to put in www on the who is in the terminal. So here we go. Flash by the screen quick. Now you can output this to a text file if you wanted to, but it's basically giving us the same information as it would on that whois.sc page. So you can see that uh, domain name, sales master flooring, register network solutions, we went through all that stuff, right? So that's just another way to do it if you really wanted to. Okay, so moving forward from that, let's get out of here. Okay, so let's find out a little bit more information about our technical contact, Mark. All right, so what we're gonna do here is, let's go ahead and copy his name again. Mark Watkins. Okay, let's go back into Google. Now, it seems like it's a pretty common name, Mark Watkins, right? So it's not like something, you know, weird. Uh, it's, it's pretty common. So we want to put in a little bit more information for our search, right? So we want to do Mark Watkins. Uh, let's see. Let's grab his company name again. And that was uh, Sales Master Flooring. Right, so we can actually just type that in. So that's a uh, sales master flooring. Now also notice that it uh, said sales master associates under the who is record, right, from earlier. So you can see here that this is um, something here. Uh, we're not really finding anything per se off of here. So why don't we do first name, last name, and change up the search query a little bit. Let's go here. And we want to do sales master associates as it said in the who is information. Okay. Oh look at that. There's a LinkedIn profile. I'm just reading the description here. Let's take a look. View the profiles of professionals named Mark Watkins on LinkedIn. Associate director at True North. Well it doesn't really look like uh, who we're looking for. But we are going to go ahead and check that out here in just a minute. Let's just take another look here quickly, see if we can find anything else in the first page. Well, no, we didn't find anything in the first page. So we know that there's some people named Mark Watkins on LinkedIn. Let's go over to uh, LinkedIn. Hey guys, I apologize about my voice. Uh, allergies are pretty, pretty heavy today, so I do apologize for that. Okay, so let's just take a browse over to LinkedIn dot com. Now we can, I think there's in here somewhere, do a search for people. Hey, how about that? Watkins. Oops, let's do the first name first. And then Watkins. Okay. Well, it's not really looking like it's coming up with anything right away here. So this is looking like it's in Boston. It's looking like uh, it's a bunch of different things here. Oh, let's see. Open Air Inc. No, doesn't look like that's him. So let's just keep searching here. Now, if you had a LinkedIn account, obviously you can get more information if you wanted to sign in and then go ahead and do the search. Um, we're not going to do that, though. We're going to try to do that the hard way here. So if we maybe went to, let's see, there's another one here in pharmaceuticals, oil and energy. Well, gee guys, I mean, there's 303 profiles. This could take a while. So why don't we go ahead and put into our search result, salesmaster associates, linkedin.com. Yeah, that looks like it's going to pull up the same thing here. No. 
That's not it either. Okay. So it looks like we'd have to actually log into a LinkedIn account. I'm just going to go ahead and create one here quickly. Okay, guys, so we went ahead and created ourselves a bogus uh, LinkedIn profile to try to get more information about our uh, Mr. Mark Watkins. And let's see if uh, kind of information he's got to uh, offer up. So we're just going to go ahead and copy this. Now, there's a couple of different searches you can do on LinkedIn or places like LinkedIn. You can do a search for the company itself. A lot of times, a lot of companies will... Um, you know, have their employees join LinkedIn individually and then form a group. So you can see how many employees the company has, etc. cetera. Um, so you may want to do a broad search like that, but we're just after Mark right now because we know he's a technical contact of some sort. We want to find out a little bit more information about him. So let's see if we can pull anything up here. Oh, hey, how about that? Mark Watkins, VP at Sales Master Associates, Inc., well, it looks like he's a vice president of something. Let's go ahead and click on his profile. Okay, so taking information about Mr. Mark Watkins, he is the VP at Salesmaster Associates, Inc. He's also a technical contact. So we can see that he's been working there since December 1990 to, to now. So that's 22 years and seven months. Before that, Mr. Mark worked at Sterling Floor Designs from 86 till 90. Before that, he was a senior marketing representative at Armstrong World Industries from July 83 to 86. And it tells us here that he went to college and he's got a BS in magna cum laude something marketing finance. Okie doke. He also went to high school, obviously, in 1976 to 1979, and he went to Chatham High School. Now, the reason why I'm going through all of this information, as petty as it may sound, we are trying to build up information on Mark, right? So as much information as we get from uh, about Mark, maybe we'll be able to guess some passwords or security questions to reset passwords, so on and so forth. Do you see what I'm getting at? Um, you know, we're not going to be doing that uh, on this guy because I don't know who he is and, you know, whatever. He's just some random person. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and copy this information anyway. So let's go all the way up to here and let's just copy this. Now you can copy the rest of the information if you wanted to. Um, you know, I, I, it's really up to you. So I'm just going to go down to the bottom of my page here. So, okay. So Mr. Mark Watkins. All right. Well, and speaking about Mr. Mark Watkins, so we know he's the vice president at Salesmaster Associates, Inc. So he's one of the higher-ups, right? And he's also a technical contact, as we said. And he's in the wholesale market, so that means he sells to other contractors. Why is that important? Well, again, social engineering, guys. If we called up the company, and now we know that they usually sell wholesale, so we can pretend like we're a contractor, right? Hey, I'm interested in your program. Can you send me some information? Why is that important? Well, because when they send you an email, sometimes if you look through the email header... Uh, in the actual email itself, not only can you find what email they're using, obviously, but a lot of times people misconfigure mail servers, and even if they're using mail relay servers, their source IP is attached to it, as well as sometimes misconfigured mail servers, especially Microsoft um, uh, Microsoft mail servers in general, I guess you could say, but Exchange servers in particular, like to give away the local LAN IP address of the person sending it. So then we could surmise what the internal network looks like just from that one email. You see what I mean? It's all about using logic. It's all about using your brain and digging in and doing some research. Okay, so the next thing we want to try to do is now that we've gathered as much information as possible from them, uh, and we're not port scanning yet, we're not going crazy because we don't even have an IP address yet, right? I mean, they refused to give us the IP address. They said, hey, Mr. Hacker, go get it on your own. Okay, so we're working on that. So now... Let's take some of that information that we got from them and let's do some searching on that. So first things first, I want to take their direct phone number. I'm not concerned about the 800 number. We could check out who the provider of that is too, but uh, I'm not really concerned about that. I want their local number. I want to know who their ISP is, right? So let's go out to another web page here. Let's just quickly do a Google search. 
So now you can search by their phone number. Okay. It's just going to give you uh, some sites that that phone number is actually linked to. Okay, it looks like they're on Sales Spider. Um, looks like they might be in a different, a couple of different websites here. So we, that's not helping us, though. It's not really helping us find who their ISP is, right? So we want to know. I mean, we just got to know. So what you could do is a special Google search here for prefixes. You want to look up the prefix. Now, the prefix is the first three digits after the area code, right? So you have an area code, of course, and you have the prefix, and then you have their unique number, which says that they're in that prefix, and that's their actual business. So that's really the connecting number, right? So like an IP address maps you to a certain, you know, subnet server, so on and so forth. Same thing with telephone numbers. So we're looking for these first three numbers here. So again, I want to search for a prefix lookup. Okay. Now we obviously want it to be for the US. So let's try this link here. Phonefinder.net. Okay. So you can see here it says search USA and Canadian telephone numbers. Okay, well, we want to enter in the prefix. So again, we go back to our oops. And we, we know it's 631, so we can enter in that. And then 242 is what we're after. So let's take a look. Going back here. So we just type in 631, and then we paste the prefix in, or you can type it in if you want to remember it. I try not to overload my brain when I'm doing information gathering. I like to write everything down, copy, paste it, or type it in. Okay, so okay, so we'll just copy the last four digits here. And we'll go ahead and paste that in. So we're going to search. Oh, look at that. The prefix came back to Deer Park. Imagine that. So it's saying that it's owned by Verizon. Okay. Well, that's interesting. So let's take down that information. And it's going to go ahead and say, we'll just type in here prefix lookup. And then we will copy this information here. And we're going to go ahead and paste it in here. Okay. So it says it's in Verizon. Well, that's pretty interesting. So the thing with that is, is that sometimes prefixes change, right? You, so you've probably heard of porting over your phone number to a different provider, especially with cell phones. So you may have a cell phone number like, you know, your prefix is, you know, 793 or something. Um, and that may be a Verizon prefix by default. Like that's where you bought your cell phone from and that's where they had, you know, the number they gave you is a 793 prefix. But you may say, hey, you know what, Verizon, I'm done with you, I'm going to AT&T. Well, you can bring your number along with you to AT&T. However, the switches that prefixes are, are put into will not always, always automatically update, especially websites that uh, look up prefixes for you will not automatically update all the time. So, what we could surmise here is that uh, it might be Verizon or it might be somebody else. So why don't we have a look at the major ISPs in that area. Now I happen to know what the major ISPs are in that area and sometimes it may help just do a quick Google search for you just to find that out. But if they're local to you, you're, you're probably going to know, you know who's the major players in ISP land in, in that area. So let's just go ahead and go out and do a Google search for major ISP in and then the zip code which if we go back in here we can copy this we can copy the whole thing okay so let's go back over to our browser and just copy and paste that in there okay so let's take a look here uh, there's a florist in here that's probably not what we're looking for uh, auction depot no, it doesn't look like there's anything in here that we're looking for. Okay, so we just want to do ISP search. So guys, the thing about information gathering is it is a long and tedious process if you do it right. Um, you know, I've went ahead and fast-tracked some of the steps here because I've already looked this information up. But it is a long and sometimes boring process to get going. 
However, it is the most critical, most key component of any penetration test or network security audit. So you have to stick with it. Okay, so let's see, broadbandmap.gov. Well, let's go see if they have any results. Maybe we can look something up. Okay, is there a search function in here? Well, we don't really know, do we? Okay, so let's click on State of New York. Oy, look at that. There's a lot of them in there. Okay. So I guess... Let's see if there's a link here somewhere where we can put in some... Uh, ah, look at that. Please enter any address. Deer Park, New York. Find broadband. Okay. Let's see. Below is a list of the broadband providers. Hey, how about that? We just got some information. Okay, so it looks like the two major players here in the wired world, and we can just click here on the filter results, show wired. Oh, it looks like there's three major players in here. Platinum Equity LLC, CSC Holdings LLC, and Verizon Communications. Well, now if we remember, the prefix said that we were in Verizon, right? but we're not 100% sure yet. This is where social engineering will come in. Okay, This is where you're going to get your information. So, a lot of ISPs, especially one around this area in particular, have a little fun feature of automated process. So when you dial into their uh, help desk line, it'll say, please, or this is the telephone number you're calling from. Is this a telephone number associated with your account? So you have options usually to say yes or no. So if you say no, more than likely, 9 out of 10 times, they're going to ask you to input your telephone number. Okay? So you put in your telephone number, all the 631 and you know the prefix and the last four digits and all that good stuff. You pop it in there. And if it says cannot locate your account, chances are 9 out of 10 times they are not with that provider. Okay? So Verizon, I think, has something similar to that. But we don't know who CSC Holdings are, right? And we're doubting that Platinum Equity here is going to be a usable provider. I mean, they only have 6 to 10 megabits per second, whereas everybody else has much more, right? So we're going to go after these two top providers here. So CSC Holdings, let's see who they are. Okay, link to website, imagine that. And it looks like it's Cablevision.com. So let's go shoot over to them. Okay. So since it's a business that we're auditing, Let's go ahead and click on Business Services, and hey, it brings us to their specified p uh, web page for their business class internet and phone services, right? So what I would do here is I would start by calling Verizon, since it says the prefix of Verizon, and if Verizon uh, says that my phone number doesn't belong, or even if you speak to a customer service representative and be like, yeah, I just want to you know, check on the status of my account, I'm not really having any issues per se, um, you know, can I give you my phone number? So it's important to have, when you're doing social engineering, it's very important to have all of your information in front of you in a decent format that you can quickly reference as they fire off questions to you. You do not want any pause or delay or lag in your responses. You want to be confident and you want to speak to the question quickly. You do not want to take your time like, um, uh, especially when they're asking your name, like, well, what's your name? Um, uh, uh, that would be kind of ridiculous and they're going to think something's up. Vice versa, if they ask you what your address is, and you're like, um, uh, I mean, come on, who doesn't know what their address is, right? So, nine out of ten times, these people are trained to pick up on that kind of stuff, and they're just gatekeepers. They'll just kick you to the curb. Yeah, sorry, I can't help you. When you figure it out, give us a call back, right? So, um, unfortunately, that's the way it is uh, nowadays. It used to be much easier back in the day, you know. But uh, nonetheless, have your information in front of you quickly. And then you can be able to call back to their questions uh, with, with quick answers. And so they'll, they'll sort of get the feeling that you know what you're talking about. You're on the ball. And uh, they're going to assume it's you, right? So they may ask you for, um, they should never ask you for personal information like, what's the last uh, four of your social or whatever, unless you're actually checking out your billing stuff. They may ask you for that or an account password or something. If you get hit with that, you know, be like, oh, you know, I just forgot. Uh, I'm not sure what I set the stupid password as. And, you know, it could have been any four digits. I don't know. I mean, life's so crazy. You know? And you make them kind of um, not want to ask you that question again, sort of. Social engineering is really an art. Uh, Kevin Mitnick, 
perfected it pretty much. Um, he's got a couple of books out, uh, you know, worth uh, worth reading for sure. Um, go out and check out uh, Kevin Mitnick on uh, Amazon.com. Get some of the books. His newest book is Ghost in the Wire. Uh, really good stuff to read, guys, so check him out. Um, he's got really good books on social engineering, too. Anyway, moving forward, let's get back to the actual social engineering attack. So, in this case, I already went ahead and called Verizon, punched in a number. It didn't work. It says, sorry, we can't find your account information. So, I got to assume that since that's their actual legit business number, it doesn't belong to Verizon anymore. At least that prefix doesn't. So, the next one I tried was uh, a different ISP. In order to better serve you, please enter your 10 digit main business telephone number starting with the area code. Please give us a moment to look up your account information. Just a moment. Now, in a few words, please tell us the reason for your call. You can say things like, make a credit card payment, or my remote is not working. Technical support. You're calling about a service issue, is that right? Yes. Okay. Which service is affected? Internet. Say cable. Okay, got it. Please hold. Please hold while we transfer you to a representative. This is Troy. How can I help you? Hey, Troy. How I can get you started with the uh, telephone number if you'd like. Uh, no problem. You can do that. They confirm the name and address, and I'll be, uh... Um, I'm looking to set up a site to site VPN with one of our remote offices and unfortunately I misplaced the uh, booklet that you guys gave us with all the static IPs on it. So I just need no to Yeah, I just need to grab those so I can finish this job up and go home. Uh just find me a moment. Uh could be the call to help you out with this. Just find sure. me a moment. Sure, thanks. Uh well you know in the future if you ever need this type of stuff, you can go to our website. I, of course I'm more than happy to give it to you right now. So let me just load up some data here. Okay, awesome. Grabbing all of your accounting. Yep, so it'll be just a moment. I'll be for you in a moment. Sure, thank you. Now, so um, sure. Now, you have five IP addresses all in order. Right. Uh, I'll start with the first one. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah, go ahead. So it's dot nine eight. And they're all in order. So the next one is dot nine nine. Okay. Next one is one hundred. Okay. One oh one. Okay. One oh two. All right. And how about uh, the gateway and DNS servers? Yep, I'll give you all that stuff. So the default gateway is always one less than your first IP address. Okay, so it's the default gateway is two four. So go ahead. Yeah, dot nine seven then. That would be correct. Okay, that's the gateway. And subnet so mask. Yep. Subnet so mask for you is two five five. Okay. Dot two five five. Yep. Dot two five five. Right. Dot two four eight. Okie doke. And the DNS. Yep. Second one? Second one is 167. Yep. Dot 206. Okay. Dot 7. Right. Dot 4. Dot 4. All right, thanks a lot. Anything else I can do? No, that's it. Have a great night. You too. Thanks, please. Hope for survey on my personal performance and take care. Great, thanks. To continue in English. All right, guys, so that was pretty awesome, uh, the social engineering. Uh, if you noticed, I was pretty quick on my toes, maybe even a little too fast, and I kept cutting that guy off. However, uh, I wanted to convey the impression that I was in a rush. If you noticed that in that recording, I mentioned, uh, you know, so I could finish this up and go home. Like, hey, the freaking boss stuck me here today, and I'm pissed off about it, and I don't want to be here any later than I'm supposed to be. I got to go, so please hurry up with the information. So that gave a sense of uh, urgency to that guy and him being a technical guy as well, surmising that we're also a technical guy because we mentioned some technical stuff, site-to-site -site VPN, so on and so forth. Um, he, he, he kind of feels compassion for us, even if he doesn't know it yet. And so he wants to help us up 
and uh, help us out and get out of there quickly, right? So he's just like, yeah, yeah, sure, I'll give you the IP addresses. Yeah, absolutely. You want the DNS service too? No problem. Here's a subnet mask and here's the gateway. Have a great day. See you later, right? So that was pretty cool. Uh, I've had to do that in some cases before. Uh, some years ago, I was working for a company doing a pen test, and they did not want to give me their IP address. They refused. They absolutely flat out refused. I sat there in front of a board. Now, this was a rather large law firm uh, that I was doing this audit for. And I sat there in front of their board, and you know, as soon as they signed the contract and said, all right, well, when are you going to get started? I said, well, I'll get started right now. So what do you mean right now? I said, well, I'll get started right now. What's your IP address? Oh, well, we're not giving that to you. I mean, you know, you're you're the hacker. You're supposed to break into our network as if, you know, you didn't know who we were and you were some uh, strange black hat hacker somewhere, as you said, and, you know, you can gain access to our network. Well, you'd have to find out our IP address, right? So I'm like, okay, interesting. Um, never had anybody say no to giving me their IP address when they signed the contract. Nonetheless, I was in for the challenge. So I decided to... Uh, come up with a good story in my head um, you know how, how can I how can I social engineer them well I did exactly kinda of what we did here uh, I, I went ahead and I you know had their business name obviously because they signed it into the contract and you know I went ahead and uh, went back to the office I did a little research online to figure out their physical address to match up with what I had to make sure that the business registration wasn't registered to like a PO box or something like that so I went ahead and checked um, the government's database uh, for corporations in the state and I went ahead and verified that that address is actually the address registered to their corporation so I decided well you know I kinda wanna make this a little interesting for myself and I'm not gonna sit here and do it from the office so I actually went to a payphone when payphones existed nowadays you can't really find one but uh, I went to a payphone and I wanted to convey the idea that I had surmised in my head that the idea that I came up with for my ploy now that that's the whole thing you have to come up with an idea or a ploy to make that other person on the other end of the line believe you are who you say you are right with a sense of urgency always with a sense of urgency okay um, in, in some cases you may want to do a sense of compassion I mean it's really all how you feel comfortable working out your, your social engineering attack okay so I like the sense of urgency in most cases especially speaking to other technical people and pretending to be a technical person you know myself so um, I went to a payphone. I called up the ISP. This was the only ISP in the area. I called up the ISP. I reached directly out to their technical support line, and I went ahead and uh, said uh, loudly and obnoxiously, uh, "Yeah, this is Joe over at uh, Joe's uh, Networking Inc. And uh, listen, I got a junior guy out there on site at, at one of my customers' locations. He's trying to set up a uh, a site-to-site -site VPN, and you know th th this moron can't even figure out the internal IP address and the external IP address. He's all confused, and I'm out on the road. Again, that was what I wanted to convey. I'm out on the road, so that's why I called from a payphone, so you can hear the traffic and the road noise around you, right? So I said, uh, "Yeah, you know, I'm trying to get out there, but traffic's so crazy. Uh, you do me a favor, and uh, you know, give me those IP addresses so I can I can get this to this kid, and he can hurry up and get it done. So when I get out there, we can just finish up and go home." And the guy was like. Yeah, well, uh, let me just confirm the uh, the business information first. I said, yeah, yeah, sure, no problem, go ahead. So he's like, uh, all right, well, um, you know, what's the uh, name and address on the account? Gave him the name of the company, gave him the address, and he said, okay. He didn't ask for a technical contact. He didn't ask who I was, nothing. See, the sense of urgency on the technical side, being a, pretending as I'm a, a technical network contractor or whatever, um, you know what, I got a junior guy out there, and I was very loud, very obnoxious, and kind of fast paced hurry go hurry go to convey to him the sense of urgency of like I need to get this done right now like yesterday um, and I tried to convey to him that I was you know under the gun and pissed off about the junior guy not knowing what he was doing so he didn't even ask me anything further didn't ask me for anything else uh, in fact which was odd to me but nonetheless it worked and uh, not only did he give me the IP address which was a static IP address he gave me the DNS servers, he gave me the subnet mask, much like this guy, but he went a step further and also gave me some information that I wasn't privy to and uh, what kind of router they had behind the cable modem. Okay, So he does say, oh yeah, well, uh, you know, and then the links this router that's behind the cable modem. I said, oh really? He goes, yeah, 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 the, the gateway over there on that thing is uh, 192.168.1.1. So, holy cow. So I said, all right, thanks a lot, bub. No problem. Take it easy. I got to go. I hung up the phone quick, right? Now I went back to the office, 
found their IP address, and started my pen test. It's all about the information gathering, guys. As mundane and as annoying as it may be, as I said, and I will keep saying, it is the most critical part of your job. The more information you have, the easier your life is going to be. I am not kidding. Uh, if you had no information but an IP address, I guess you could start scanning like that. But what if you had to, you know, no way in, and you had to social engineer your way around the network, right? You had to some, send somebody a payload or, or a link, you know? Uh, you had to spoof an email address and, you know, send it like as if you're, you know, somebody that's in the company. Like, let's uh, take Elisa, for instance, that's the operator, okay? She probably doesn't take her job very seriously, right? She's, she's just an operator. I mean, let's give it up. So um, if I sent her one from, you know, one of the higher-ups in the company, like, Bob or something, uh, you know, I said, hey, check out this funny pic of my uh, weekend, <laughs> you know, and she clicks on the link and, and nothing happens or, you know, it gives an error message. She's just like, ah, stupid Bob, you know, send any stupid pictures. She closes it out, doesn't think anything of it. But now I have a reverse shell on her machine. She doesn't know. Bob doesn't know. Mark doesn't know. Nobody knows, right? Nobody knows I'm in the network. Now I'm taking my time and I'm waiting until everybody goes home and I'm sitting there and I'm scanning, I'm enumerating a network and busting up and exploiting other machines now that I have local access, right? Before you know it, by the time they come in in the morning, I've got all their machines owned, maybe even their phone system. I've got access to all their emails, passwords. I've cracked all their hashes that are on their network. I use pass to hash attacks and pivoting attacks. I'm pretty much in, right? So then I build my report and uh, close up all the back doors as I back out of the network because, again, we don't want to leave anything open for the bad guys. And then, uh, you know, I give them a call in a couple of days and say, hey, here's all the information I got. Here's your fixes. Call me for the post follow-up scan. Have a nice day. And they're going to sit there and scratch their heads like, how the heck did he get into the network? We didn't even give him the IP address. H how did he work that out, right? All about social engineering. So you'll see that whether you're using like social engineering toolkit that's included in Kali Linux to help you build your payloads and exploits and, you know, fancy email attacks and all that client-side uh, attack stuff, you know, regular old school social engineering like uh, Kevin Mitnick and all the other guys and myself included back in the day used to do uh, will still always save your butt at the end of the day when nothing else works. If they don't click links, if you can't spoof an email address or get any of their email addresses, your telephone is your last resort to getting into the network, okay? Sometimes it's my first chance. I'll just call up and start asking questions, you know? And uh, believe it or not, 50% of the time I get answers from people that I shouldn't get answers from. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that that's really what it is, guys. It's all about building um, your intel and uh, using that to plot your course, as we said in the last video, much the same as a, uh, a ship's captain or uh, a pilot would do. Um, you know, if, if you don't have a clear course, you're probably going to crash somewhere. So... That's pretty much it, guys. Uh, we're going to see it in the next video, uh, which is actually going to be the reconnaissance. And we're going to start port scanning. We're going to learn about Nmap. We're going to learn about Netcat. We are going to learn about a bunch of different scanners. So that's where we're going to get into our enumeration. Um, if you haven't checked it already, check out our, our uh, webpage. Uh, we got a forum going for you guys to chat about uh, stuff in there, ask for help, uh, post how to's, and you know, tutorials and stuff like that. So it's a pretty cool community. It's growing in leaps and bounds. Everybody seems to really, really like it. Uh, so thanks for the suggestion, guys, on that. Um, we got that accomplished and got that going, so that's great. Uh, our Hacker Challenge of the Week is ending this week. So if you want to go ahead and get our videos, it's ending on Friday. Uh, Friday being the 28th. Um, it's going to be ending on the 28th. So get in there. Um, use Logic. Again, it's a, it's a Logic hack. I want to try to drive home logic to you guys. Uh, get in there and do that. Download our videos for free. Uh, check it out. Uh, we will be changing the challenge for next week, um, stepping it up a little bit, uh, so you guys get a little familiar with it. All right? So won't take up too much more of your time. Have a good day, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching.